maybe even into some foreign countries. I ask you now to take your Bibles and turn with me to Proverbs chapter 31. And I want to speak on this subject today, the qualities of a godly mother. And uh, it's, it's an honorable tribute, I believe, to mothers. And uh, it's somewhat of an expository sermon. You'll find that out as we go through uh, the book of Proverbs. I want to take a minute to thank each and every one of you for watching today. Pick up the phone, call somebody and say, hey, Buford Road's on. And uh, he's preaching today on the qualities of a godly mother. I pray that you will let us know that you're watching and may the Lord bless you. I find myself today and uh, you as well, we are assembled, whether you're assembled with your family or by yourself, around the sentiments of this very, very special day. The truth of the matter is this, we are participating in something that's been done in America for over 100 years. Some of you may not know this, but the observance of Mother's Day started way back in 1908. I want you to think about that. The story goes like this. There was a woman who was named Anna Jarvis who out of great devotion to her mother asked her pastor if it were possible to have a very special service on a Sunday to honor all mothers of her congregation. And he enthusiastically agreed. And so on May the 10th, listen carefully, May the 10th, 1908, that church held that special service and presented a beautiful carnation to all of the mothers who were present in the service on that particular Sunday morning. The carnation was chosen because it was the favorite flower of the mother of Anna Jarvis. And the news began to spread like wildfire all over the county, all over the state. And soon it passionately burned in the hearts of millions of people all across America. Everybody was talking about it. And as a result of that, and this blessed me, maybe you already know this, perhaps it will bless you. As a result of all of that excitement, as fast as it traveled all over the country, President Woodrow Wilson proclaimed the second Sunday in May every year as Mother's Day. He said this would be a fine time for public expression of our love and our reverence for all of our mothers. And so today when we gather on this Sunday morning in the manner in which we do, whether it's in your home or whether me, the band and the singers and the technicians, are gathered here today. I look in the word of God and by biblical command, I think, and out of personal love and by presidential declaration, we can honor our mothers today. Now, I've mentioned to you before in many of the Mother's Day services that's gone by that for me particularly, this is the most difficult sermon for me to preach and all of the year, out of 52 Sundays of the year, this one, this one sermon, this one Sunday is a most difficult sermon for me. And because of that, I think uh, it has a lot to do with my shepherd's heart, my pastor's heart. But every year when I sit down and I begin to think about this and the service to come and, and the subject matter in which we're going to be talking about, I find myself both physically and spiritually drained when I finish preparing for this message. And because I'm aware of the fact that for some of us today, some of you, maybe this is the first Mother's Day that you have observed without your mother. And, and recently, I'm thinking about my dear friend, Steve Sheffield, and I'm thinking of Debbie, who had so wonderfully taken care of grace uh, through the years and, and other family members as well. Gail and I had an opportunity to spend some time with grace uh, just a few days before the lockdown started. We spent about an hour with her. And in that particular visit, uh, she was herself, grace, and you know what that means. And 
Uh, she was uh, jovial. I could tell she was uh, struggling to breathe just a little bit. But then she said this about Debbie. She said, you know, uh, I never think of Debbie as a daughter-in-law. She is a daughter to me. And she expressed those sentiments to Gail and I for five or ten minutes, and she couldn't say enough, and she loved her as if she had given birth to her. And I know this is difficult for this particular family today because this is the first Mother's Day that you have observed without Grace uh, being with us. Many of you can probably associate something like that with your family as well. Perhaps this year your mother has gone on to be with the Lord. And uh, maybe you may not even uh, have had time to grieve in proper ways. And I realize that some of you, on the other hand, uh, maybe your mother has not passed in recent years. Maybe she has passed in years gone by, many, many years ago. And so you're thinking about her today and your mother's been gone for quite some time. But the precious memories that you have will never be forgotten. And when you allow yourself to think and meditate on memory of your mother, you know the floodgates of those precious memories overwhelm you with many different types of emotions. And so when I think about the Word of God before us today, this is and will always be a certain note of sadness in your heart when this particular day comes. And so as I preach this sermon this morning, I understand that there are many different emotions revolving around this day. But for those of you whom this message applies this morning, let me give you a word of encouragement as we think about that. Though this may be a sad day for you in certain ways, not, not everybody is sad. Some of you are still blessed and privileged to have your mother alive and well on this earth. I know that uh, Danny and I, we extend to our mother a very happy Mother's Day. Though this may be a sad day for some of you, I rest assured that if your mother knew Jesus Christ, it's certainly a glad day for her. Think about this for a moment. She's not in pain anymore. She doesn't need medicine anymore. She doesn't need any kind of special treatments anymore. She doesn't need help to the bathroom anymore. She doesn't help need help getting dressed or she doesn't have a need of helping her with uh, food or to be fed. And think about this. She'll never have to make another trip to a nursing home or assisted living. She'll never again have to watch you suffer over her suffering. She's glad because she's in a land that's fairer than day. She's now laid down her heavy burdens at the feet of Jesus. And to further this joy, you think about it with me. If your mother was a Christian, she is with our wonderful Lord. And I promise you that she'll be waiting at the pearly gates for you. She's waiting to be reunited with you soon. And I believe in that sweet by and by, and I believe it's going to be sooner than we think. And so this morning, we think about all mothers. We think about mothers who are watching this broadcast today by Facebook or live stream. We think about mothers who have gone on to be with the Lord who are in heaven. We think about mothers who are reflecting on this day without their mother. So indeed, this is a day of many different kinds of emotions. And that's why it makes it so difficult for me. If we were all gathered here today and uh, these pews were filled on Mother's Day just like they have typically been filled in the past, and I stand here in the pulpit and I look out across this congregation and we talk about a subject like this, I can see people crying. I, I can see people reminiscing. I, I, there are so many different emotions before me. And that's one of the reasons why it makes it so difficult to speak on a subject like this. There are many special scriptures, I think, throughout the Bible that direct our attention to honor our mothers. But perhaps the scripture that I'm asking you to turn to today is probably one of the most familiar passages 
in all of the Bible. In fact, it may be the classic passage in all of the Bible that expresses gratitude and tribute to mothers. And so I want to read with you now, and I want you to follow along with me in Proverbs chapter 31. I want to begin reading in verse number 10. The Bible says, who can find a virtuous woman? For her price is far above rubies. The heart of her husband doth safely trust in her, so that he shall have no need of spoil. She will do him good and not evil all the days of her life. She seeketh wool and flax and worketh willingly with her hands. She is like the merchant ships. She bringeth her food from afar. She riseth also while it is yet night. And that's a special verse we'll get to in just a moment. And giveth meat to her household and a portion to her maidens. She considereth a field and buyeth it. With the fruit of her hand she planteth a vineyard. She girdeth her loins with strength and strengtheneth her arms. Look at that, so precious. Now, I want to go on with you now here in verse number 18, and I want to stop and we will come back to some of these scriptures in just a minute. She perceiveth that her merchandise is good. Her candle goeth not out by night. I think if we did not read Proverbs 31 on Mother's Day, it would almost be like not reading Luke chapter 2 and verse number 11 at Christmas time. For unto you is born this day in the city of David a Savior, which is Christ the Lord. And so if we didn't read Proverbs 31 today, it would be like not reading Luke 2.11 at Christmas. Or it would be like not reading Matthew 28 at Easter time. He is not here, for he is risen. And so we give special tribute to our mothers in this particular scripture. In this beautiful passage, we find both a guide and we find a goal. And it is a composite of all the virtues and values of a godly mother. Sometimes when I study the word, and if I'm looking hard enough, and I pray you read the Bible with those kinds of expectations. Maybe when you have your devotions and you're studying the word of God, maybe you've prayed something like this. Lord, I pray today that you would help me when I open the pages of scripture to show me something that I have never seen before. God, make it new, make it fresh. God, just shine the light of heaven down upon it. Maybe you prayed something like this, Lord, I'm very familiar with this text, but I pray that you would refresh me in it today, maybe like I've never been refreshed before. That's what I do. I ask God to help me to see something in the scriptures that I'm not familiar with, something that I've not seen before. When I study this text, that's the kind of thing that comes to my heart, that comes to my mind. I want you to hold your place here for a moment and turn back with me to Proverbs chapter 1 and I want you to look beginning in verse number 1 and I want to read for you through verse number 9. Look at this. We're coming back to Proverbs 31, but I want you to see something at the very beginning of this book. This is interesting and this blessed me. I hope that it will bless you. In Proverbs chapter 1, verse number 1, the Bible says, The Proverbs of Solomon, the son of David, king of Israel. To know wisdom, we're talking about wisdom in our Wednesday night Bible study. And I pray that it's a blessing to you. I cannot tell you how many people have wrote to me uh, during the week to let me know how much of a blessing it was to them and how much of a blessing it is to them. There are some people who are facing monumental decisions right now and are letting me know how this study on wisdom is really helping them. And so you look at this, the king of Israel, to know wisdom and instruction, to perceive the words of understanding, to receive the instruction of wisdom, justice and judgment, equity. Notice this, to give subtlety to the simple, to the young man, knowledge and discretion. A wise man will hear and will increase learning, and a man of understanding shall attain unto the wise counsels. To understand a proverb and the interpretation, the words of the wise and their dark sayings. 
The fear of the Lord is the beginning of knowledge, but fools despise wisdom and instruction. My son, hear the instruction of thy father and forsake not the law of thy mother, for they shall be an ornament of grace unto thy head and chains about thy neck. And so as this book opens up with a father giving his son instruction, and then the journey of life begins. Now go back with me to Proverbs 31. We see how the book begins. Now I want you to see how the book ends. You know how it begins in Proverbs chapter 1. Now look at how it ends in Proverbs 31. It closes with a son paying tribute to his mother. The words of King Lemuel, the prophecy that his mother taught him. This is one of the most beautiful examples in all of the word of God that demonstrates and illustrates you train up a child in the way that they shall go and when they are old, they shall not depart from it. When you look at Proverbs 1 and then you look at Proverbs 31, it's a great testament to that. From the wise counsel of the father, The son in return, he expresses a beautiful tribute to his mother. And so the first thing that I want us to notice today as we focus on the subject, the qualities of a godly mother, number one is the value of a godly mother. In verse 10 of Proverbs 31, the Bible says that her price is far above rubies. That means that a godly mother is priceless. There is not a better mother on the face of the earth than the mother who has given their heart to the Lord Jesus Christ. There's something special and invaluable about a godly mother, one that has a genuine relationship with God, who has daily fellowship with him. And I can truly tell you that that's the exact picture of my wife, Gail. I cannot tell you how many times that I've walked into our family room and I've found her with her Bible open and her devotional book in her lap and taking notes probably in the chair that she's sitting right now watching this broadcast, right beside her, you'll find the Bible and all of her study notes. I want you to understand something. That means something to me. There's nothing any more precious than the value of a godly mother. Nothing can take the place of a mother who truly loves the Lord God and dedicates her life to nurture her family with that same kind of love. I thank God for mothers who are living Uh, godly lives before their families who teach lessons of morality, who teach right from wrong. I thank God for mothers who consider it to be the highest priority of their life to have children and to raise them in the house of God, to teach them the principles and the truths of the scripture. What a wonderful thing it is to have a godly mother. Now, anybody that's listening today, if you're with your mother right now, listen, especially the children who are watching the program today and you have a godly mother, look over to her and say, thank you, mom, for loving Jesus. Thank you for loving God. And I say to every man here today, never take that for granted. If you have a godly wife, it's a gift far more precious than rubies. Never take it for granted. Secondly, this morning, I want us to notice the dedication The dedication of a godly mother. In Proverbs chapter 31 and verse number 15, the Bible says she riseth. Look at this. This, this, it meant so much to me to read this. I can identify with it in our home. And while we were raising all of our children, this, this is a classic verse of scripture that went on in pastor's home. All of our life as while we were raising children, this verse right here, look at it very carefully. Proverbs 31, 15, she riseth also while it is yet night. What does that mean? That means that the sun hasn't come up yet. She's out of the bed early. She's out of the bed early. She riseth up also while it is yet night and giveth meat. Notice that. Giveth meat to her household and a portion to her maidens. This is a very beautiful passage of scripture. It's a portrayal of a mother and how dedicated she is to her household. She's busy at home. She gets up early in the morning with children. And before the sun gets up, she's preparing breakfast for them. If they're in school, she's packing lunches. Many times she's checking homework. 
And most mothers today, listen, are having to work outside of the home. And I realize that. I don't know how many of them do it. They keep their homes in order. And they work all day somewhere else, securing the necessities of life, trying to help ends meet. Now, a dedicated mother will do those things. And I can truly tell you that's the kind of mother that Gail has been to our children when they were growing up. A dedicated mother, she will only want the best for her children. She will only want the best for her husband. She will only want the best for her Lord. And I frankly do not know how that these serious-minded mothers really do it. But it has been done. I'm an eyewitness to it. It went on in our home for years. I can tell you truthfully that that's the kind of mother that my children have known. Number three, a godly mother is a discerning mother. She's one who prays over decisions. She's one that makes wise investments. Verse 16, look at this. She considereth a field and buyeth it. With the fruit of her hands, she planted a vineyard. Talk, look at that, the fruit of her hands. She's probably considering long-term family needs, not just spur of the moment, just for the right now, but she's looking down the road. She's trying to make investments for her family. Number four, a godly mother is a sensible woman. Verse 26, she openeth her mouth with wisdom. Not in a lot of rant, not in a lot of rage, not in a lot of commotion. But notice this, she opened her mouth with wisdom and in her tongue is the law of kindness. Now here is the description of a woman whose words are tempered with truth and wisdom. Who doesn't get on Facebook and flaunt her ignorance. And work around acting like a child and obnoxious and acting hateful and saying hurtful things. If you look very carefully, this is a picture of a mother who understands how important it is to cultivate a godly personality in the hearts of her children. I was reading a statistic this week that perked me up just a little bit. Listen to this. It said that 85% of a child's personality is pretty well fixed by the time that that child turns six years old. And what mothers say to their children in these tender years has a serious effect on the outcome of their personality. A study showed this, that if a mother is hateful in their home, there is a good chance that their children will be when they are grown. If a mother is loving, there is a good chance that their children will be loving. If a mother is godly, there's a better chance that their children will become children who love God as well. Number five, listen carefully. We find the rewards of being a godly mother. Verse 28, her children arise up. Notice this. Her children arise up and call her blessed. Her husband also, and he praiseth her. One of the greatest phone calls or little notes that could ever come your way from any one of your children is the one when it says, Mom, I didn't quite understand it then. I didn't understand it when I was growing up. But I will tell you this, now that I'm older, now that I'm more mature, I can understand it very well. I want to thank you, Mom, for the godly investment that you made in my life. And so we find the words of gratitude. And finally, number six, and I want to conclude with this, is we find the greatest thing that could ever be said about a mother in verse number 30. Favor is deceitful and beauty is vain. But a woman that feareth the Lord, she shall be praised. This verse it sheds light on the subject that beauty is only skin deep. Beauty fades like a flower, but virtue is something that's everlasting. And there's no mother on the planet any greater than the one who loves the Lord, who fears him, who has that godly reverence, who trusts him, and who wants their children to know that and to be that as well. That's the kind of mother that the scripture is praising and edifying and lifting up today. That's the kind of mother that 
honors God and that's pleasing to him. The greatest note to leave this special service on today is this, that Jesus Christ had the preeminence in every single aspect of these points and that you are adopting them into your life. What great thing or what better thing could a child give their mother today when they leave this earth than the promise of meeting her at the throne of Jesus at the end? What better gift could a mother be given today than the heart assurance that her, her heart is sold out to Christ, but also to know that her children are also sold out to Christ. If you don't know the Lord Jesus Christ, listen carefully. I would encourage you in the conclusion of this service to give your heart to him. There's, there would be no greater gift. I would say this to young children. I would say this to young people. I would say this of anyone here today. Maybe your mother has gone on already to heaven. She's waiting. And maybe she went to heaven not knowing for sure whether or not you would be with her one day. Maybe your mother went to heaven wondering, is he really saved? Does he really know the Lord? Maybe your mother went to heaven wondering, is she really saved? Does she really know the Lord? One of the best things that you could give your mother today, whether she's already with the Lord or still alive on this earth, is the assurance that when you come to the end of the way, that you are ready to go, you are ready to meet the Lord, that you have given your heart to Christ. And there's only one way to do that, and that's to receive Him. I, I am blessed. I cannot tell you how blessed I am beyond measure. When, whenever I have seen Franklin Graham come on the television in recent days and give the simple plan of salvation and give the gospel invitation, and it's so simple. I marvel at that. And I will tell you today the same thing that he says. Friend, listen, if you just give your heart to Christ, understanding that Jesus Christ came to this earth 2,000 years ago, he died on a cross, he shed his blood for my sins and your sins. It's the only thing that could make atonement. And God the Father on the third day raised him from the dead. And he gives the invitation Whosoever will come unto me, I will in no wise cast out. If you just open up your heart and give your heart to Jesus today, he will come in. He will save you. But you must ask him. So where you are right now, what you pray.